Welcome once again. Our first conversation this morning is on the local government elections that took place in Lagos State on Saturday. Voter turnout was low and it was uh, very peaceful. Some parties uh, still are complaining of voter uh, suppression and the beating up of party agents with pictures that we can't show because they're bloody. And we still, of course, are very fine them. But we have this clip. that I've been in Lekki, we only just got, I just got to vote at exactly almost 3.15 p.m. The election materials at 013 Admiralty in Lekki did not turn up till 15 minutes ago. Before then, I had gone to about four different locations within Lekki. I was told it was in VI. I went to 1004, went to about five polling booths. Ladies, friends, we need to ensure that going forward this doesn't happen. And yesterday, the Youth Party addressed a news conference pointing out specific instances of rigging. Specifically, there were three sets of challenges that we saw in Ikate uh, for polling units three to eight. The polling units were moved into the palace of the Oba, disenfranchising any voters who wanted to vote for anyone other than the ruling party. It's a terrible affront to democracy to suggest that polling booths should be placed in places where they are unreachable by people who want to vote for um, any other parties beyond the ruling party. Beyond that, in Igbokoshu, we saw a series of violence and harassment of voters, of our polling agents, um, and of anybody, again, who wish to vote for anyone beyond the ruling party. Lastly, in Lekki, several polling units did not receive materials until very, very late in the day. The latest of these were received at 3.15. Polling should have stopped at 3 p.m., but the polling materials did not actually arrive until 3.15 p.m. And so many people who had come out in the morning, who had come out earlier in the afternoon to vote, did not have the opportunity to cast their votes. And also a report by Plus TV's Aneta Felix. Full and ad hoc staff of the Lagos State Independent Electoral Commission, LISEC, receive election materials at the Ikoi Obalende Local Council Development Area Secretariat. With the necessary tools and materials, including card readers and ballot boxes received, they board buses designated to take them to different polling units in Etiosa local government area. It's past 9 a.m. and election supervisors of the People's Democratic Party get these issues off their chest. At the moment, I think it's very slow. Most places still don't have their polling unit sets. Most of the polling booths that are close to the barrack, you said they should bring it opposite the road. It's not done. That's, that's where uh, INEC had their election. Why are you bringing it too far away from the people? At polling unit 2, Ward 10 in EJ, voting begins slowly with a setup of electoral materials as voters trickle in. So we are going to actually be on a single line and we are starting now. Residents of EJ, including a chairmanship candidate, commence the election as peaceful and the environment calm. It went well, very cool and calm, no stress. The only issue I had is my card is broken and instead of it to be registered automatically, then registered it manually. The voting is okay, it's going well, everything is normal. So no fight. I just want peaceful for Nigeria. The Laseka trying. They came in earlier. But beyond the calm and outside the gates, we witnessed some shady activities, including vote buying. They gave you 1,000 naira, and I was wondering why. Why did you decide to collect the 1,000 naira? I don't know. Instead of the crowds to build, less people show up to cast their votes, just as in other polling units in the local government area. Security experts are of the opinion that public disaffection may be responsible for the low turnout. Aneta Felix, PLOS TV Africa. And that's a report by Aneta Felix uh, from the elections on Saturday. Uh, we also had spoken with uh, Deji Doherty 
um, uh, later on that day to share his thoughts on, you know, the events con on that day. Most of the things that we, of course, uh, witnessed and reported were re with regards to low turnout. Even uh, the governor of the state, uh, Babajide Songwulu, had me mentioned uh, pretty much the same thing, that it was low turnout of uh, persons and um, the electorate at the election. Um, talking about, um, you know, the election being peaceful, uh, you know, it, it's, in, it's interesting seeing that that is something that we have to notice, that the elections were peaceful, Mo maybe because of what Nigerians are used to, for, you know, from elections in the past. Elections are peaceful. They normally should be peaceful. If you look at elections in other parts of the world, they are expected to be peaceful. But when you hear people say, oh, well, the election has been peaceful so far, there's been no crisis, it means that, you know, Nigerians are used to a, a situation where there is either ballot box snatching or there's dogs come, you know, sent to come disrupt, uh, you know, polling units and, you know, some of all of that. But, you know, some other thing that I believe we would also bring up is the relevance of the local government elections. And it's one of the things that I had to speak with the uh, Jidoheti and uh, the, uh, the APC uh, uh, spokesperson also on Saturday about how relevant are local government elections to Nigerians across the country. How many people recognize or even remember that there are local government elections? How many people are willing to participate in the local government elections? And my theory, really, aside, you know, the fact that, you know, people had said that, uh, you know, oh, people didn't turn out or the voters didn't turn out simply because, uh, you know, they don't trust the process. I, I, you know, might say, okay, yes, there is that point. But I feel like another reason there's not a lot of people who showed up at the local government elections is because they haven't been able to see the actual relevance of the local government elections and the relevance of the local government itself. How many Nigerians remember where their local government office is? How many Nigerians know who their local government chairman is? How many Nigerians know what the local government should do for them? Including, you know, in their marketplaces and in the streets and in their gutters and li little bits of infrastructure here and there. Aside paying local government salaries at the end of every month. How many Nigerians know the relevance of the local government itself? It might be one of the reasons not very many people are eager to vote. The governorship elections, the House of Assembly elections seem to have more popularity than the local government elections in Nigeria. Local council elections also. The governorship and, of course, the presidential elections gather all the publicity. They get all, you know, the publicity that is necessary. All the conversations concerning the elections in Nigeria, if you ask the next 10 Nigerians you see on the streets, I'm very sure they got seven or eight of them um, are only, you know, going to remember that there is a governorship election and then there is a presidential election and the, you know, House of Assembly, State House of Assembly and uh, National House of Assembly, um, um, uh, National Assembly, rather, um, elections. But the local government doesn't get that much publicity. You can blame the people for being ignorant on that level, but at the same time, you can ask, you know, if the, rel the local government itself has made itself, the local government has, you know, as a level of government has made itself relevant enough to the people to always remember that there should be a local government chairman that they should vote for. And that's one of the things that I feel is a problem with the local government elections in Nigeria. It hasn't been relevant. There's the NFIU directive, you know, that I think it was in 2016 that made it, you know, uh, compulsory that states and local governments uh, receive their funds directly from the federal government. That has been in, you know, in, in process since, but it doesn't seem like a lot has changed even since then. Every local government in Nigeria receives on the average 150 to 250, sometimes as much as 300 million naira every month. Has your local government, whichever one you stay, you know, in Etiosa here, maybe, you know, somewhere outside, you know, Lagos State, you know, in Oredo, in Ego, local government area, in, you know, Enugu North, has any of these local governments been able to, you know, show itself as entirely relevant? Has any of the local government chairmen been able to show the relevance of the local government in the lives of the electorate, to do the things that the local government should be responsible for in the lives of the electorate. How many marketplaces, how many roads have been built, how many streets have been fixed, how many street lights have been fixed, the most basic things. Every other time on the television we say, oh, you know, the local government is the closest, you know, to the people. You know, because that's the one that is most relevant to the people. But have they truly been relevant 
to the people of the state in every single level. Look across local governments in northern Nigeria that continue to receive their um, um, allocations every month. And like I said, an average of 150 to 250 million, sometimes more, every month. Those local government areas have had security challenges for so long. They've basically not functioned in the last four, five, six, maybe even 10 years because of security challenges that they've been having. But they continue to receive allocations. You still cannot point out one thing or another that the local government uses those funds for. Look at the gutters around where you live. Look at all of the gutters around Lekki, for example, that are you know, filled up with water. You still cannot point out anything that the local government truly uses these funds for, besides paying salaries at the end of the month. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue with this conversation, and of course, we'll be bringing in our guest. <laughs>